Chapter 526, The Loner Heavenly King The title itself was the synonym of power. Why did some mentally distorted foreign practitioners consider murdering heavenly kings as a top achievement? It was precisely because of the inherent difficulty. Until today, no one had the courage to answer to any of the murder warrants for heavenly kings posted on the Darkness Kingdom, because there would be a price to pay if they did. Should they fail, not only would their reputation and credit suffer, they would also be labeled as losers who thought too highly of themselves. Moreover, all heavenly kings stayed in China, which left the ambitious killers with practically no chances. Certainly, though, there were those waiting for their opportunity in the darkness. The title would also put one under the global limelight, and the word famous would be insufficient to describe them. When Lu Xu heard about the offer, he was by all means surprised. Who would expect an insignificant boy, who used to get along by selling stinky tofu, to rise to the throne of a heavenly king? Even so, Lu Xu chose to decline it despite the irresistible temptation. He did not want to see Lu Xiu's dying for him. Shi Xuejin smiled calmly and said, In this era, the chosen ones do exist. I am equally saddened by Lu Xiu's death but same as him, I will not think twice if my sacrifice is necessary. Of course, I will not force you. But I suggest you to consider it carefully. In fact, neither Nye Ting nor Shi Xuejin had expected the trip to Japan to affect and transform certain parts of Lu Xu's perspectives, which resulted in some contradictions in his own values. Just like during the Pledge of Allegiance back then, some were uncertain and some were inspired. They were merely simple minds in their teens, sheltered from the cruelty and the true face of the outside world. They had grown up under their parents' loving protection. But it was a different case for Lu Xu. He had witnessed the good side, including people like Uncle Li and Li Xianyi, and he had seen the bad side too, such as the coldness and the indifference of the world. Hence, he hesitated. Lu Xu would never judge his own selfishness, as it was only a personal attitude in life. However, at this moment, his long-held beliefs were toppled by Lu Xiu's and many others. Now, he was even surrounded by a sense of helplessness. Lu Xiu had sacrificed his life for him, but could he return his life to Lu Xiu? He could not. He could still repay Uncle Li and Li Xianyi's care for Lu Xiaoyu and himself, but how could he do the same to Lu Xiu? Could avenging him by killing Takashima Tairatsu be considered as reciprocation? But the dead could not be brought back again. To Lu Xu, being selfless was impossible, at least not for him throughout his entire life. Yet, now, he had different views. Lu Xiu's death resulted in an unsolvable knot in Lu Xu's heart. He could not return to Luo City now, because he had to attend Lu Xiu's funeral, to bid his last farewell to the hero his savior. Lu Xu declined Shi Xuejin's kindness and walked out of the courtyard. Heavy snow fell from the sky. Pedestrians walked gingerly on the streets, cautious about the slippery floor. A boy gently wrapped a girl in a scarf, and the latter cheerfully slid her hands into the boy's overcoat pockets. An elder was waiting for the bus, holding a basket of vegetables in his hands, a middle-aged man pressed a button on his car key and the headlights of a car beside the street flashed in response. In this worldly city, a tinge of loss rose in Lu Xu's heart, with a little helplessness. Standing in the frozen world, Lu Xu phoned Lu Xiaoyu. The call was answered very shortly, but Lu Xiaoyu spoke angrily before Lu Xu could say anything, don't talk. I am furious right now, and you can't make me happy. With that, Lu Xiaoyu hung up the phone. At a loss over what to do, traces of loneliness crept into Lu Xu's heart. It felt like something had clogged up his throat, and he was suffocating. He did not call Lu Xiaoyu a second time. Instead, he moved forward slowly. He had no idea where to go, or what he could do. He happened to walk past a noisy internet cafe. People in their loneliest moments tended to be attracted to boisterous places. Upon second thoughts, Lu Xu pushed open the door and walked in. Just when he had a good view of the rowdy scene inside, the girl at the counter yelled, You. 
the one over there at the door. Close the door now. Sure. Lu Xu closed the door. Then, he went to register for a guest card with his ID card. How much per hour? 12 yuan per hour in the hall, the receptionist replied casually. The billionaire Lu Xu was shocked. What? Are you robbers? It only cost 2 yuan per hour in a Luo City Internet Cafe. In comparison, the price here was exorbitant, no matter how high the price of living in the capital was. The girl rolled her eyes. So are you registering or not? If you aren't, leave. Lu Xu clenched his teeth and decided. I am. When he finally got a seat in the hall, he realized the internet cafe was a suitable place for him. At the very least, it was lively there, and no one would talk to him about life and dreams. At this moment, Lu Xu received a message. Thinking that it might be Lu Xiaoyu, he quickly checked his phone, only to see it was from 10086 one. No sooner than he put his phone back Lu Xu had received another message. His heart twitched again in hope. But, he checked his phone and realized that it was still not Lu Xiaoyu. Lu Xu's heart dimmed again. It was a text from a stranger. We should break up. No more contact onwards. Puzzled, Lu Xu replied to the message, Who the hell are you? I don't know you. The person replied, Freak. You win. Lu Xu was utterly confused. I really don't know a damn thing about you, bro. Are you nuts? Lu Xu switched on his computer, but still had no idea over what to do. Thus, he binged on a few movies. In the past, he could never find so much time for movies. But watching too many in one go would end up boring too. In the latter half of the night, Lu Xu saw someone return to his seat from the counter with a bowl of cup noodles. The smell of pickled Chinese cabbage was simply too tempting. Thus, Lu Xu yielded to the urge and went to buy one for himself. He was stunned, though, by the unreasonably high price charged for cup noodles. One bowl of cup noodles with pickled Chinese cabbage actually cost him eight bucks. Screw you, you penny pincher boss of the cafe. As it was close to Chinese New Year, few stayed overnight in internet cafes. At this moment, a fatty patted on Lu Xu's shoulder. Hey, brother, wanna play a game together? We are short of one player. Chapter 527, Antidote Lu Xu looked at the fatty by his side. I have never played this kind of game before. He was speaking the truth. He didn't even have a computer at home, how was it possible for him to have played computer games? He was also not willing to go to an internet cafe. In the end, he had never played a computer game before. The fatty laughed. Brother, you must be kidding me. Have you never played Crossfire 1 before? Just come and help us fill the numbers. We're short of one player for 8v8. I really can't, said Lu Xu. No worries. We are all experts in the game. Just come and win with us. All you need is to shout 666 too, the fatty said with glee. Oh. Since he had nothing else to do, why not play along with them? Luckily, one could use their chat software number to directly log into this shooting game, thus Lu Xu did not even need to register his account. After adding the fatty as his friend, they prepared to play. In the end, the fatty realized that Lu Xu really did not know how to play the same. He did not even know the controls. The fatty panicked. Use the four keys WASD to control your direction. The mouse controls your visual angle. Do you see the front sight of the gun on your screen? Just aim the gun at someone's body and fire. If you hit their head, it's an instant kill. If you want to change your bullets, press. After his explanation, Lu Xu's character could finally move. Lu Xu immediately realized that this game certainly seemed very easy. With his current reaction speed and muscle control, aiming his gun at someone was just too easy. But Lu Xu furrowed his eyebrows. 
he was not familiar with the gun's recoil. He still had to play some more before he could get used to it. The university student beside the fatty laughed. Hey, fatty, can you even move? The fatty held back and did not utter a word. It was not good to offend the person he had brought here. He decided to cooperate and play for now. Later on he would find an excuse to kick out this newbie. In the end, not even five minutes had passed when the fatty suddenly realized that Lu Xu's killing streak was sharply increasing. There were times when the opponent knelt upon seeing the fatty. The fatty shot a glance at Lu Xu's screen and shivered. Were they all headshots? The opponent was not happy. Cheating even in an internal fight? Do you have no shame? The fatty was dumbfounded. We really did not cheat. Lu Xu played with great pleasure. After he got used to the gun recoil, it was simply too easy getting headshots. It was just like what the fatty had said, a headshot was an instant kill. It was very handy. Brother, is this really your first time? The fatty was dumbfounded. Lu Xu looked at the fatty in surprise. This is really my first time. But you were right. This game is really easy. From Wang Yang's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu suddenly realized something. As long as he killed his opponent once, there would be a new income of distress points. To Lu Xu, the joy he derived from playing games was not great. But if he could obtain so much distress points from just killing someone, then this experience would be very meaningful. But the fatty called Wang Yang had never thought that Lu Xu was training for battle. He was able to train just by playing games, it was as if Lu Xu had discovered a new land. Wang Yang did not have any morals either. Great expert. Bring me along with you. Luhai Lane Courtyard House, 6 a.m. In one hand, Chur Xue Jin held a threadbound book and was slowly reading it. In the other, he pushed white rice porridge mixed with mustard leaf strips into his mouth. Eating porridge with salted vegetables in the morning, how lovely. He glanced at Nia Ting. He has been in that internet cafe for almost one and a half days. From two nights ago, all the way to this morning. Do you have anything to say? Nia Ting quickly glanced through the document in his hands. He finished reading and even memorized the 200,000-word-long document in a minute. After looking through the document, he signed his approval. He then took another document and continued looking through it. One slowly reading his book, the other quickly reading his documents, the contrast could not be clearer. Nia Ting calmly said, Lu Xiu's death has affected him greatly. Are you not scared that he cannot stand the sudden pressure? Who has not experienced any setbacks? Nia Ting was nonchalant. When he came out of the orphanage, far from his family, he survived. Survived very well, actually. There's no point being worried. True, Chu Xue Jin said as he chewed his food. Nia Ting suddenly passed a document to Chu Xue Jin. Take a look at this. Chu Xue Jin received the document. The more he looked at it, the more he furrowed his eyebrows. Have they not fully investigated the identity of the puppet master? How had he hidden so deeply within the human world? I don't know. Nia Ting shook his head. Everyone had thought that the Golden Foundation had said frightening things just to cause alarm, but I believe them. It is not because I feel that their aspirations and belief are lofty, but because I had fought the puppet master face to face during the period with bare magical energy. I knew that he was not human then. Sure, Shua Jean sighed. What exactly are they planning to do? Retreat, said Nia Ting. But it would be best if the people are not plunged into an abyss of misery, said Sure Shua Jean. He suddenly changed the topic. Do you want Hao Ji Chao to speak with Lu Xu? See if he can find out what has made Lu Xu degenerate to such an extent. There's no need. There are some things that just cannot be comprehended. In this case, one will simply find something else to do as a respite. Everyone has these kinds of moments. 
Beside, there will be someone to talk to him. Mia Ting glanced at old automatic watch. That person has probably reached him. The young girl at the front desk of the internet cafe lay on the table for a short rest. After staying up all night, she could not take it anymore. The customer's computers would automatically shut down after 7 a.m. She could go home and sleep after someone came to take over her shift. But the young girl was slightly irritated while taking her nap. These customers were especially noisy. Bang. The door of the internet cafe suddenly opened wide. The large snowflakes blew into the internet cafe by the strong wind. The young girl immediately started complaining, as if she was scolding someone. But she had not even said anything. She did not know why the customers were frightened stiff. She did not know what to say. Lu Xu rubbed the sleeve of the person beside him and argued. Ha! Ha! You are really interesting. Why do you treat the same organ differently? When I said that you are Diao 3, you are happy, but when I say that you play like a Japanese, then you are upset. Is this appropriate? From Wang Yang's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu suddenly felt that something was not right. He turned his head around and saw Lu Xiaoyu coldly standing at the door of the internet cafe. She was wearing the white down jacket Lu Xu had bought for her birthday last year, and a small hat with a pom-pom. She looked at Lu Xu. Lu Xu, you've changed. Lu Xu was momentarily stunned. He never thought that Lu Xiaoyu, who had hung up on the phone with him, had come to the capital by herself. His tired eyes suddenly regained their vigor. He slowly broke into a grin and laughed. Xiaoyu, why are you here? Mia Ting truly understood Lu Xiaoyu. He knew this fact more than Shi Xue Jin did, people could say a thousand things, but it would be of no use. On the other hand, Lu Xiaoyu could become Lu Xu's antidote without even speaking a word. Chapter 528 The Chinese Chive Seller, Lu Xiaoyu there were people who became dejected because they had killed people or seen the death of their comrades with their own eyes. They grew weary of massacres and fights. The members of the Heavenly Network had many examples of this, even during the magical era. In these cases, the Heavenly Network mainly made use of psychological counseling. But for severe cases, they would transfer them to logistics jobs. They would not insist on them continuing their jobs. In reality, forcing this kind of people to the battlefield may bring about the effects of reverse psychology. But Nye Ting and Shi Xue Jin did not have the heart to do so. Everyone made their own decisions, there was no need to force them to do anything. But Nye Ting was never concerned that Lu Xu would end up in the same situation, as he knew that it was not easy for him to live till today in this chaotic world. His tenacity was much better than most adults. Furthermore, he knew that Lu Xiaoyu had gone to the north. The moment Lu Xiaoyu hung up on the phone with Lu Xu, she knew that something was wrong. Lu Xiaoyu also felt that some things were better off said in real life to Lu Xu, even if it meant traveling a vast distance to meet him. Lu Xiaoyu had never thought that Lu Xu was so strong that he did not need the consolation of anyone. In reality, Lu Xu also had times when he was weak. For example, when he first started selling hard-boiled eggs, he could not sell everything. He ate hard-boiled eggs for all three meals. The yolk was so dry that it almost choked him. Lu Xu, who had just left the orphanage, cried as he ate. The Lu Xu then was just an ordinary boy. If he had been summoned then under the Heavenly King's current standards, he would definitely not make the cut. Lu Xu had always been growing. Only Lu Xiaoyu knew that she had the obligation to appear in front of Lu Xu when he needed her. It was as if Lu Xu would always be a part of her life. Why are you here? Lu Xu stopped his argument with Wang Yang. Lu Xiaoyu slowly walked to Lu Xu. Come, I'll treat you to hot pot. Lu Xiaoyu was not free either. If she was not planting Chinese chives, she was selling them. Her income was not low, and her personal savings were accumulated through fair means. When she had just started selling Chinese chives, people laughed at her. 
When a group of rough old men who were setting up their stores at Wenwan City saw a young lady, they would definitely ask, Young lady, have your parents abandoned you? What should Lu Xiaoyu say to that? From the start, she was not willing to talk nonsense with these kind of people. They were not superior to her. The next day, when Lu Xiaoyu brought Little Fury along with her, all these people shut their mouths, they had no choice but to do so. Little Fury would give all of them a good beating. In the end, when she was invited to the Heavenly Network, Little Fury had disappeared. Shi Fei had received a notification that someone at Wenwan City had set free magical beasts to commit violence. They could not ignore this situation. Wasn't the security department supposed to handle these kinds of situations? The Heavenly Network had also raised their own magical beasts, thus they knew that ordinary people would feel very threatened, even if they were only class F beasts. Since the practitioner's public security department had been officially formed, many people would choose to directly report to the Heavenly Network if they had encountered any strange incidents. For example, their dogs suddenly meowing, their husky suddenly howling like a wolf. They had insisted that this was a premonition that something odd would happen to their husky. But after Shi Fei and his colleagues came to Wenwan City and saw Lu Xiaoyu, they were dumbfounded. Xiaoyu, so the squirrel that attacked people just now. Um, what the heck? It was not that Shi Fei did not dare to deal with Lu Xiaoyu. But to them, Lu Xu was now sacrificing his life for the country. He had been assassinated by the collection of gods. Now, they shared a bitter hatred of the enemy. No one wanted to trouble Lu Xiaoyu now. Furthermore, no one knew that Lu Xiaoyu was a regular visitor at the MT Beimang base. Lu Xiaoyu had received the title of most welcomed temporary staff. Shi Fei was curious. Xiaoyu, what happened? Those who had teased Lu Xiaoyu had been badly battered by Little Fury. They thought that someone had finally come to help them vent their anger. But looking at the situation, they were wrong. Their saviors knew Lu Xiaoyu. The old men suddenly had a vague premonition. For people had come with Shi Fei. A girl questioned closely, Xiaoyu, explain the situation to us. If you have been wronged, we will help you fight back. The old men who had made the report were dumbfounded. We were the ones who made the report. Lu Xiaoyu said with great injustice, they said my parents have abandoned me. Shi Fei and his colleagues furrowed their eyebrows. But they could not just hear Lu Xiaoyu's side of the story. He turned his head and asked, is she speaking the truth? The old men carelessly said, we were just joking. You cannot go so far as to beat people up for a joke, right? Shi Fei coldly said, beat them up. The entire Luo City Heavenly Network was grieving over Lu Xu's death, and here there were people making fun of Lu Xiaoyu, the orphan of a national hero. Could they bear with this? Of course not. After the old men were beat up one by one, Shi Fei adjusted his clothes and collar. Let's go. Come with me to receive our punishment. The Heavenly Network could not just beat up people like that. They were already mentally prepared to receive punishment. Even if they were punished, it was worth standing up for Lu Xiaoyu. They were happy even if they had to be locked up in a small, dark room. Shi Fei smiled and greeted Lu Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu, we'll be going back first. The old men gasped in shock. They had no tears left to cry, even if they wanted to. Who were these people? Lu Xiaoyu obediently said, Brothers, sisters, goodbye. Thank you for your help. Lu Xiaoyu waited for Shi Fei and his colleagues to leave. Her expression suddenly turned cold. She turned to look at the old men and laughed coldly. Ha! Ha! From that day onwards, the entire Wenwan city market knew that someone amazing had come to the city. And she was a rather pretty young girl. But this also brought her some publicity. At the beginning, some people did not believe that the Chinese chives Lu Xiaoyu were selling were real. But now, they all believed her. 
since the heavenly network had appeared to support her. This feeling was as if she was selling Chinese chives at the heavenly network herself. Her business there was just too good. That was why Lu Xiaoyu was now very rich. Lu Xiaoyu looked Lu Xu up and down. There was fatigue and conflict in Lu Xu's eyes. But Lu Xiaoyu did not say any consoling words to Lu Xu. Instead, she stretched out her small hand. Let's go. I'll treat you to hot pot. Lu Xu smiled. Then we can eat a bit better. Lu Xiaoyu's greatest wish in the past was to wear a comfortable and soft sweater, as well as thick and heavy outerwear. She was now wearing a hat and a muffler that she really liked. She walked with Lu Xu on the creaking snow field. She breathed in happily as she walked to eat hot pot with Lu Xu. As they walked on the street, Lu Xiaoyu suddenly raised her head and asked, Why did you get involved? Lu Xu was stunned. He said in a soft voice, They want to make me a heavenly king. Do you want to? I think. No matter what, I will support you, Lu Xiaoyu said calmly. Lu Xu was glad. Lu Xiaoyu's world was actually very simple. Chapter 529 A Single Spark Can Start a Prairie Fire As of now, Lu Xu's triumphant return was still a secret known only to the elite few of the Heavenly Network. Lu Xu wondered if the collection of gods would provide him with another wave of distress points if they learned about his fake death and the deep sea white sand scam. However, the entire organization had virtually been destroyed. Even if there were people unhappy about him, there would not be too many of them alive to generate distress points. Meanwhile, thousands of kilometers away in Japan, Yeko had paid her visit to many hidden clans consecutively. In merely three days, she had grown up under immense stress and had even earned unanimous support from those she had visited. It was not only because of her possession of the remaining resources of the conservatives, but also her competent mastery of skills inherited from Oda. At the moment, the shocking news of the collapse of the collection of gods had been spread across the world. Despite their disadvantage in the absence of high-end Class A combat powers, the collection of gods, together with the Department of Faith Theory, the Phoenix Society and the Heavenly Network, were initially all on the same starting line. Therefore, the sudden elimination of a potential external threat caught everybody off guard. The news set the Darkness Kingdom in uproar for half a month. Coral's involvement in the actual battle was widely known too, but it seemed impossible that she alone could overthrow the whole collection of gods. It made no sense. Various big organizations were looking for traces in support of an alternative possibility, but to no avail. In fact, Lu Xu's involvement was completely unexpected. His identity and actions had been strictly confidential before Takashima's advancement to pseudo-class A, and almost all witnesses of his participation in the fight were dead now. Nia Ting's takeoff from the capital towards the collection of gods was video recorded. In the capital, there were some people hired only to stay in rented rooms all day and watch Nia Ting's flying directions closely. It was not very helpful, actually, because Nye Ting might have chosen to fly southward before going northward upon reaching a certain altitude. After all, his movement could not be captured outside the capital or when he was high enough. Besides, the job carried high risks. Usually, once their photos were uploaded, they would be arrested by Hao Jichao's team before they had time to retreat. Thus, Nye Ting's involvement in the battle was suspected by many but his arrival might have been too late even with his Class A flying speed taken into account. Back then, by the time Nye Ting reached the fortress, few were still alive. And he had already left with Lu Xu when spies from other big organizations rushed to the place for a closer look. As a result, the battle became a mystery. It was widely believed that the crucial piece to the puzzle was well hidden from public attention. On the other hand, the Heavenly Network seemed to be behind the hiding, because Nye Ting trusted that Lu Xu would perform better away from the limelight. In other organizations, those in charge of foreign affairs tended to be high-profile figures, such as Howard from the Phoenix Society. But that probably would not work well based on Lu Xu's personality. From the start, no one associated the battle with Lu Xu's death. 
Although it was true that the heavenly network and the collection of gods were age-long enemies, and there were disputes over the credibility of Lu Xu's death news, it was certainly impossible for a mere class C to be related to such wide-range disruption. Coral took the greatest credits. Her combat power was now ranked one of the top among class Bs. In the meantime, Lu Xiaoyu was barbecuing her beef slices as Lu Xu recounted the battle, down to every minor detail. Suddenly, she raised her head and asked, Who's that again? Coral? Why did she appear in Japan? Is the collection of gods her enemy too? But Lu Xu had no idea. However, she can be considered your life savior. How are you planning to pay her back? Lu Xiaoyu asked casually, dipping the cooked beef in her sauce plate and sending it to her mouth. For steamed boat sauce, Lu Xiaoyu preferred a mixture of sesame oil and vinegar to peanut sauce or sesame paste, because the former had a more lasting flavor. Lu Xu grinned. Don't worry so much. Let's focus on the food. Lu Xiaoyu shot Lu Xu a glance and kept silent. She was genuinely grateful for Coral's act of saving Lu Xu. They spent over 400 bucks on the food. But Lu Xiaoyu did not even hesitate when she paid the bill. As compared to Lu Xu, she was much more generous, like a new upstart. Nye Ting and Shi Xue Jin did not bother Lu Xu further about the matter of the Ninth Heavenly King. It seemed that they had purposely given Lu Xu some time to consider, either hasty nor giving up on the prospect. On the third day, Hao Ji Zhao came to inform Lu Xu of his participation in Lu Xiu's funeral. Lu Xu had planned to buy a set of black suits, because dress code did matter for that kind of occasions. However, Hao Ji Zhao returned again with a set of Heavenly Network uniform made specifically for Lu Xu's size. It was the black cloak that Lu Xu once saw them wearing. It was not the first time Lu Xu had visited the secret base in the Lingjing Lane. Besides Hao Ji Chao, Nia Ting, Shi Xue Jin, Zhong Yutong, and Yu Mingyu, no one knew why he was there, as few were aware that it was Lu Xu who brought Lu Xiu back. Zhong Yutong and Yu Mingyu came from Yuzhou specially for the funeral, because Lu Xiu was sent for the mission by Zhong Yutong, and he was also Yu Mingyu's comrade. During the funeral, Nia Ting delivered a speech at the memorial. He glanced over the audience and said calmly, In this mission, Lu Xiu claimed the credit for wiping out Takashima Tairatsu, but he was martyred as a result. Lu Xiu was born in 1983 and he had been acting on a secret mission in the collection of gods for 11 years 2 months and 17 days. During his mission, he was unable to return for his mother when she passed away due to sickness. Last month, he requested to return home for a bowl of authentic minced meat noodle. I approved. But I never expected he would come home this way. Nye Ting paused. His emotions could hardly be concealed under his composed facial expressions. Nye Ting continued. In this era, fortune and fame are widely sought after, and many are no longer willing to bear hardships. They are concerned about job promotions and salaries. As for the safety and security of our country, they leave them to others. Since they are unwilling to fulfill those duties, we have no one else to turn to. It is our obligations. It is my honor to work with everybody present today, to be able to uphold our belief and passion, together, in this unpredictable world. Today, Lu Xiu stood up. Tomorrow, it might be me, Nye Ting. I, Nye Ting, may die, but the heavenly network and our country, China, will always live on and thrive. May all fighters of the Heavenly Network advance forward fearlessly in the upcoming apocalypse. So long as there is a single spark, we can set a prairie ablaze. Chapter 530, Reunion with Lu Li For people like Lu Xiao, their existence were like beacons of light in the darkness. We walked in the darkness, surrounded by apathy and coldness, and we needed not be told how much more cheating, deception and ugliness lay ahead of us. What we needed was a reminder that we could become a more beautiful and positive version of ourselves. Lu Xu stood in silence in the last row of the crowd. How Ji Chao told him that Lu Xiu's standing posture in his death would be crafted into a bronze statue to be erected in Lingjing Lane, 
and an account of Lu Xiu's life would be carved on the base of the statue. The Heavenly Network did not mind the world knowing that they killed Takashima Tairatsu. On the base, it was clearly written that Lu Xiu perished when he assisted his comrade in slaying Takashima. However, no one could deduce the true identity of the so-called his comrade. Lu Xiu brought Lu Xiaoyu forward to pay their last tribute to Lu Xiu. Lu Xiaoyu made a deep, sincere bow to Lu Xiu's coffin and said softly, Thank you for saving Lu Xiu. Unfortunately, though, she could not sense Lu Xiu's spirit from within the coffin. It was also Lu Xiu's reason for bringing her to the site, to test his hypothesis on his ability to revive the dead after the completion of his collection of the Seven Swords. Your reading on beoxnovel.com thanks. Although it was only a guess, he had to make some effort in proving it nonetheless. Lu Xiaoyu shook her head at Lu Xu, whose expressions darkened slightly. Maybe it was better this way, because Lu Xiu's spirit could well be lost if Lu Xu's spirit reconstruction failed. He certainly did not want to take the risk before he was sure of what he was doing. Many people were pleasantly surprised to see Lu Xu again. They had just sent a comrade away, and here returned another comrade. In fact, although they grieved during the funeral, they were not weak. It would be fine to carry on from where Lu Xiu had left off. Thus, Lu Xu made a brief explanation about his mission to obtain deep sea white sand by fraud. He did not go into details, though, because it was nothing glorious to get rewards through fraudulent means. But, he had never expected people's response. Good job. You did the right thing. You took their stuff and took revenge. That's good enough. Most importantly, you are safe. Lu Xu was speechless for a long while. They were model soldiers trained by Nye Ting, what could he expect? But at this moment, he suddenly caught a glimpse of Lu Li. Lu Xu took a long moment to recover from his shock. He pointed at Lu Li and asked Yu Mingyu, why is he here? Yu Mingyu asked in reply, curious, why, do you know him? Nonsense. He's my Dao Yuan classmate. Lu Xu said, slightly annoyed. I see. He's Lu Xiu's cousin. Heavenly King Ye asked him to attend the memorial, Yu Mingyu explained, when he was young, he was pretty close with Lu Xiu. Lu Xiu left when he was about six. It's said that Lu Xiu used to bring him around while letting him ride on his shoulders. Thus, Lu Xiu had been Lu Li's role model since the kid was young, and then he became an undercover agent in Japan which made Lu Li even more proud of his country. Of course, he only knew his cousin was working for our country, but had not the slightest idea of his exact assignment or whereabouts. Lu Xu was shocked. He had certainly not expected the relationship between Lu Xiu and Lu Li. Now, his conscience was guilt-stricken, recounting on what a pain in the ass he had been to Lu Li. Wait for me for a second, Xiao Yu, Lu Xu said and walked towards Lu Li, who was startled too upon seeing him approaching. From Lu Li's distress, plus 999. You, you are still alive. Lu Li exclaimed, as if he had met a ghost. Lu Xu was a tad awkward. Honestly speaking, he really did not want to upset Lu Li in this situation, though he had not been nice to him in the past. Hence, Lu Xu could only comfort himself by thinking that it was perfectly normal for one to be distressed upon meeting someone presumed to be dead. It was an impulsive decision to approach Lu Li, and now, Lu Xu was suddenly at a loss of words. In order to break the awkward silence, Lu Xu apologized, I am truly very sorry for what I did in the past. From now onwards, we are classmates and comrades in arms. So we must love and care for each other. Staring into Lu Xu's genuine expression, Lu Li did not know how to respond. From Lu Li's distress, plus 999. He had been planning to avenge Lu Xu ever since he found out about his death. In spite of the many unhappy memories between them, Lu Li had to admit that Lu Xu was kind at heart. But now, he was pretty shocked by Lu Xu's behavior. What are you doing? So earnestly repenting for your past misdeeds? Please be normal, brother. Yu Mingyu and Hao Jichao were shocked too. 
Had that annoying kiddo suddenly undergone a change in temperament? Indeed, Lu Xu's irritating personality had left too deep an impression on all members of the Heavenly Network. Lu Li took a long while to reply, since you are still alive, why were you absent from the admission test of Lu Ocean College? It's over now. Lu Xu continued, as if he did not hear him talking. From today onwards, your trouble is my trouble too. Tell me if you get bullied or if you need money. Forget it. You are rich enough. Wait. What did you just say? He had missed the admission test of Lu Ocean College? He must have been tricked. Lu Xu's expression darkened at once. He immediately left and walked towards Zhong Yutong. I suppose I am eligible for a makeup admission test for Luoshan Cultivation College, right? But Zhong Yutong ignored him and waved at Yu Mingyu. Yu Mingyu, come here. I want to have a word with you. Before he could walk away, Lu Xu pulled him back forcefully. Based on his strength, Zhong Yutong's clothes would have been torn apart had he not stopped shortly. From Zhong Yutong's distress, plus 374. Listen to me, Lu Xu. The admission test for Luoshan Cultivation College is the same as high school leaving examinations. It's a national paper and no makeup assessment is allowed, Zhong Yutong smiled, though his expression was kind of stiff. As the person in charge of Lu Xu's undercover mission, he had good knowledge of Lu Xu's actions in the collection of gods. The kid could even take down a bloody pseudo class A, so how was he, Zhong Yutong, a rival to him? But he had no choice too. During this period of time, he had turned down countless people in power. There was no way to open the back door for Lu Xu. Furthermore, Zhong Yutong was in no position to decide whether to open the back door. After some consideration, he said, Little Xu, it's not a serious problem. Really? You can simply talk to Heavenly King Ye or Heavenly King Shur. There's no use to finding me. Lu Xu gave a cold laugh. Ha! <laughs> From Zhong Yutong's distress, plus 666. Let me go first. Ha! <laughs> Are you not going to let me go? Ha! <laughs> From Zhong Yutong's distress, plus 999. Doesn't mean to be happy Cause it looks like we all don't know Last half full or empty And we just put them on the show